Well, hello and welcome. I miss heard with Miss Heard song lyrics. We're in season five, episode 244, first ever Bob Seeger and the Silver Bullet, Miss Heard song lyric. Miss Heard lyric is, call me erratic, call me what you will. And then the correct lyrics is, call me a relic, call me what you will. That erratic and relic are pretty close. And once you hear it, you can't unhear it. All right. Lots and lots of wormholes. We're going to be following this because so many tentacles to this. So let's start. Old time rock and roll is what the name of the song is. It's written by a George Jackson and Thomas E. Jones III with some uncredited lyrics, they say, on the interweb by Bob Seger. It was recorded by Bob Seger for his 10th studio album called Stranger in Town, also released as a single back in 1979. Yours truly was a mere seven. It is a what they call sentimentalized look back at the music of the original rock and roll era. So I'm guessing 50s, 60s, and has been referenced as Seeger's favorite song. I, I'm not surprised. It's also become a standard in popular music and ranked number two on the Amusement and Music Operators Association survey for the top 40 jukebox singles of all time back in 1996. I did not know that. It was also listed as one of the songs of the century in 2001 and ranked number 100 in the American Film Institute's 100 Years, 100 Songs poll in 2004 of the top songs in American cinema. That was 20 years ago already. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about who Bob Seger is. So he was born Robert Clark Seger back on May 6, 1945. So his birthday is almost here. He's a retired American singer, songwriter, and musician, and locally known as what they say a successful Detroit area artist. He performed as and recorded as Bob Seger and The Last Heard, and then it was also then also known as Bob Seger System throughout the 1960s, breaking through with his first album called Ramblin' Gamblin' Man, which also contained his first national hit of the same name back in 1969. Back in the early 1970s, he had dropped the system from the name of his band and continued to strive for a broader success with various other brands. In 1973, he put together the Silver Bullet Band. So that's how I've always known him as Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band with a group of Detroit, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> oh, oh. with a group of Detroit area Michigan musicians with whom he became most successful, that's how I know him, on the national level with the album Live Bullet back in 1976, recorded live with the Silver Bullet Band in 1975 at Cobo Hall in Detroit, Michigan. And then in 1976, he achieved national breakout with his studio album called Night Moves. Night Moves. Love that song. On his studio albums, he also worked extensively with the well-known Alabama-based Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section. I think I talked about him several, several podcast episodes ago. So they're appearing again. And they have also appeared on several of Seeger's best-selling singles and albums. So Lux to use Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section. What I know about him, and he has a very distinct sound is that Bob Seger is known for his cl classic raspy powerful voice and wrote and recorded songs that dealt with love women blue collar themes and is one of the best known examples of what they call a heartland rock artist here's some of his hits just to name a few night moves which I night moves turn the page which I think I believe was done as a cover by Metallica so that's another one Main Street still the same Hollywood Nights, Against the Wind. I mean, Running Against the Wind, that's one. You Accompany Me, Shame on the Moon, Roll Me Away, Like a Rock, and Shake Down. The last of which were written for the 1987 film Beverly Hills Cop 2, I remember that, and topped the Billboard Hot 100 chart. He also co-wrote the Ingalls' number one hit, Heartache Tonight. I'm gonna have a heartache tonight, I know. I love that song. And his recording of what we're talking about today as the Mr. Hurt, Old Time Rock and Roll was named one of the songs of the century in 2001. He is very successful, Mr. Seeger. With a career spanning six decades, he sold more than 75 million records worldwide. So I imagine that most of it wasn't downloaded. It's mostly people going into the record store buying his music, making him one of the world's best-selling artists of all time. He was also officially inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as he should be, back in 2004, so 20 years ago this year, and the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2012. Seeger was named Billboard's 2015 Legend of Live honoree at the 12th Annual Billboard Touring Conference and Awards held back on November 18th, 19th at the Roosevelt Hotel in New York. 
His farewell tour took place in 2018 and 2019. So let's talk about Mr. Seeger and when he was a young boy on to how we know him now. He was born at, they call the Henry Ford Hospital, obviously Detroit, where Ford was born in Detroit, Michigan, the son of Charlotte and Stuart Seeger. At age five, he moved with his family to Ann Arbor, Michigan. He had an older brother named George. Seeger's father was a medical technician for Ford Motor Company, so really ingrained in the auto industry there, played several instruments, and Seeger was exposed to music from an early age. That makes sense. The sad part of though was he was exposed to also frequent arguments between his parents that disturbed the neighborhood at night. So you can imagine everyone whispering about the yelling they hear. And then in 1956, when Seeger was only 10 years old, his father left the family and moved to California without him. That resulted in the remaining family to lose their comfortable middle-class status, as they say, and struggle financially. Bob Seeger then attended Tappan Junior High School, now Tappan Middle School in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and graduated back in 1963 from Ann Arbor High School, now known as Pioneer High School. So those of you in that area in Michigan, shout out, because I'm talking about your, your hood there. He ran track and field, did not know that in high school, and also went to Lincoln Park High School for a time. A lot of his musical or early aspiration musical mentors are actually um regarding his early music inspirations Seeger had stated he looked on to little richard he was the first one that really got to me he said quote unquote little richard and of course elvis presley come go with me by the dell kings i hit 1957 was their first record he bought so definitely had a big influence on him so let's talk about the covers of his song uh, so the song was actually featured in a 1983 film, Risky Business, with a then young Tom Cruise, we'll talk more into that, where his character that Tom Cruise plays, Joel Goodson, is known for lip syncing and dancing in his whitey tidies on the song, plays after his parents leave his home. And remember, he's wearing, I think, just a white Oxford, and he slides in, very well known. Well... They call this song, uh, this movie, Risky Business, a coming of age. There's a lot of themes now that I don't know if we could do it now in 2024. So then you could. It was directed and written by uh, Paul Brickman in his directorial debut and starring a young 21-year-old Tom Cruise and then a 24-year-old Rebecca De Mornay, who's the love interest, and follows the sexual exploits of a high school senior during his parents' vacation trip. This is considered to be one of Cruise's breakout roles, I would agree. He um, also, with Rebecca De Mornay, uh, actually had an affair with her. So the story goes here that she dated then actor, or still actor, Harry Dean Stanton in the early 1980s when they met 1981 on the set of One From Heart. And they dated until she and Tom Cruise did this movie and had an affair during the filming of it in 1982. And then 1985, three years later, both De Mornay and Cruise broke up eventually. So there's some there's some uh, goings on in there. How did it do? Well, Risky Business was released in the U.S. back on August 5th, 1983. So what is that? 41 years ago? Wow. And it's considered a commercial and critical success. The film grossed more than $63 million at the box office and received acclaim while may, many compare it to The Graduate 1967. I will tell you, I haven't seen it as an adult, but I remember as a young person watching it, it was a lot of... Sexual themes, like, you know, Rebecca De Mornay is a uh, prostitute, and I think there's one scene, famous scene, where she and Tom Cruise do it on a train, as one does, and with no one, of course, walking in on him, and the whole hijinks is of him having a party, ruining the, their dad's, of course, um, Portia, and getting this great idea of, you know what, let's have all of De Mornay's other prostitute friends come, we'll invite them all, make money in one night with all my young high school boy friends, friends, and then make all this money to pay everything back. So very crazy. And again, I don't know if we could do this now or it'd be, I don't know. It just for 1983, I guess you can get it right with it then. So if you haven't watched it, go for it. You can find it in any of the streaming sites, I believe. And then the song was also in the Chipmunks movie. So in 1985, the Chipmunks um, it's not a movie, but the Chipmunks did a version of it. And as Seeger pointed out above, was used in, they also used this in a Hardee's commercial advertising album in the Chipmunks glasses. So there you go. If the Chipmunks are singing your song, you know you've made it. And then, of course, as a youngin, Alf, the TV show. So if you haven't seen it, it's about this, it looks kind of like, 
like a bear, but it's not. It's alien life forms. So an alien named Alf, and it was a TV show back in, in the mid 80s. And it shows here that that scene where I talked about where Tom Cruise is sliding in with socks and what have you. Alf does the same thing when he's left alone and trashes the house. So very funny. Probably can find it on YouTube as well. And then the first ad using this song was uh, also ads by athletes Kobe Bryant, Tony Hawk, Alice Rodriguez, and Michael Phelps. The song was also featured in episodes of The Nanny, The Fresh and uh, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, a young you know who you know who, in that Northern Exposure, South Park, Scrubs, and The Flash. And it also is briefly sang in an episode of season one of the Netflix series, one of my favorite Stranger Things, and also used as a teaser trailer for Garfield the movie. So a lot of a lot of ways this song has been used in the snippet. And I guess back in mid 2020 with the whole COVID-19 pandemic, the song was featured in a Domino's pizza commercial and countless delivery during the COVID-19 pandemic. It also was in the Activision Guitar Hero World Tour video game. And I think I remember playing it. it there was a television commercial directed by a Brett Radner Based on the scene, um, each featuring a different set of celebrities lip singing to the lyrics while using the new instrument controllers. That first ad who had all the celebrities that were lip syncing included Kobe Bryant, Tony Hawk, Alex Rodriguez, Alex Rodriguez, and Michael Phelps. So there you go. So speaking of Brett Radner, why does that name ring a bell? Other than what I mentioned that he directed this Activision Guitar Hero World Tour. Well, I did some searching on this. Here's the next rabbit hole we're running into. He was born March 28th, 1969. He is an American film director and producer. He directed Rush Hour film series with Chris Tucker, very funny. The Family Ran, Red Dragon, X-Men, The Last Hands, and Tower Heist. He produced several movies, including the Horrible Bosses series, The Revenant, and War Dogs, so big names, and was an executive producer for a television series, I think it was in Fox, called Prison Break, so very popular. He got his start directing with doing a lot of music videos and directed his first motion picture, Money Talks, in 1997. Overall, his films have earned him about $2 billion at global box office, so a lot of money. He's also the co-founder of Rat Pack Entertainment, a film production company that um, he started back in September 2013 and co-produced deal with Warner Brothers. So uh, he, he also had a... Okay, so let's start back. Ratner is co-founder of Rat Pack Entertainment, a film production company, he also led the Rat Pack partnership with Dune Entertainment back in September 2013 for a co-producing deal with Warner Brothers, Brothers that includes 75 films. So that's what he was like going to be making in his time. He also, through Rat Pack Entertainment, co-financed 81 theatrically released motion pictures exceeding $17 billion in worldwide box office receipts. So the guy is doing great. His Rat Pack's co-financed films have been nominated for 59 Academy Awards, 25 Golden Globes, 43 BAFTAs, and won 25 Academy Awards, eight Golden Globes, 24 BAFTAs. And then back in January 2017, he received a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his contributions to the motion picture industry located at 6801 Hollywood Boulevard. Well, here's where it doesn't get good. He was part of the whole Me Too movement and, and being a part of it that he didn't want to. So back in October 2017, during the Me Too movement, a former talent agency employee accused Ratner of rape. This is where it gets really serious. On November 1st, uh, 2017, six women, including Olivia Munn and Natasha Henstrich, so well-known actresses, accused Ratner of sexual assault and harassment, as well as following an actress into a bathroom without invitation and, sorry, masturbating as another entered his trailer to deliver food. Oh, my God. The same month, Elliot Page, formerly known as Ellen Page, accused Ratner of sexual har harassment and outing she was then 18-year-old as um, gay before Ellen, or now Elliot Page, came out as a trans man in front of many onlookers, including Anna Paquin, a Paquin, who later confirmed the story. So she's like, yeah, it, it happened. I was there. And then a former fashion model came forward regarding an incident involving Russell Simmons and Ratner back in 1991, saying when Simmons co co coerced her to perform oral sex while Ratner was there. Great. Uh, back on that November 1st, 2017, the same day as the allegations of six women, Warner Brothers were like, uh, no ma'am, Pam, announced they had severed ties with Ratner. Afterwards, Ratner announced that he was stepping away from all Warner Brothers-related activities 
and Warner Brothers was reviewing the case. And then April 2018, Warner Brothers announced they would not renew the $450 million co-producing deal with Rat Pack. He has since not produced a film in Hollywood since then, and he apparently emigrated in Israel in 2023. There are some reports that he's coming back to do something, but I've not seen anything. So that Me Too movement really shone, shone a light on this um, Brett Radner who happened to do a Guitar Hero World, World Series television commercial using this song. So like I told you, there's a lot of tentacles from good to bad in this case. But all in all, Mr. Seeger is still alive from what I can see. Married, uh, I think has a daughter and life is good. So again, it's not calm. It's not call me erratic, call me what you will. It's call me a relic, call me what you will. And I love this song. And if you have any great suggestions like this misheard song lyric, send it to any of our social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, or you can just send me an old fashioned old-fashioned, old-time rock and roll email at Miss Her, that's M-I-S-S-H-E-A-R-D songs at gmail.com. Till then, keep singing those songs wrong. Bye!